And so I want to thank everybody who's come out tonight to support me, um, my birthday, and also the initiative that we um, that we're doing for the month. What Capital Learning Group is doing for the month, which is the Le More des Soir or the Le More des Soir um project and so this is our third year this is our third anniversary in doing Le More de Soir and I started on my birthday doing it and um so here it is three years later still going at it still uplifting educators to educate and share and empower them and also focusing on mental health so we know how important that is especially in our industry um in, in education and also for child care providers and nannies. And so the more this why is um, to come and bridge all of those um, sectors of education together. Because sometimes we do have kind of like a hierarchy um, in education. And so we want to tear those barriers down, you know, and come together as, as a community and to celebrate the things that we do each and every day, how we influence our teachers, um, how we influence our, our students, our children, and, and celebrate those things that we do, you know, each and every day. And especially during the pandemic, you know, we went through so much as a community, um, you know, just to make sure that our families and our students and our children were getting what they need. And sometimes we, you know, during those efforts, we've neglected ourselves as well. And so, you know, Le More de Soir is really um, a community, um, community member effort to come as a community member to come and uplift educating and empower other educators who also share in the passion of educating children and students um all over so that's kind of how Lamar de Soir was birthed really uh, with the idea of uplifting educators and focusing on mental health so we have a lot of great things that's going on with Lamar de Soir this year this year we are really focusing again on mental health we have partnered with um Nominee Georgia which is a great organization um, in the mental health community with various free resources and trainings. They'll be doing trainings um, and workshops in the second week of February. We also are partnering with um, Viewpoint um, Health here in um, Georgia and Rockdale County. They are also going to be doing some workshops, free workshops for us. Um, and so we want to make sure that we are um, you know, really carrying the torch of supporting educators in mental health. And it's, it's so important. It was just something very astonishing that I, that I read that, um, you know, about education and suicide, that right now we carry the highest rate of suicide amongst all industries. And it's no wonder, you know, the things that we go through. And I really want to make sure that um, Le More de Soir, that we create a framework and work Le More de Soir in um, educational businesses, organizations, and schools, that we have safe spaces for them, for teachers to come and get resources to talk about the things that they're going through within, um, you know, the workplace in their livelihood, because there are some issues that um, educators go through that people you know, general, the general public does not go through. And so we need to have teacher specific um, trainings and ideas to help, um, to help educators to get through what they're getting through or need to get through um, so that they can live healthy um, lives and, uh, you know, have a, mel a healthy mental status and well-being. So um, Le More de Soir is definitely on the move of doing that. We want to scale, you know, further, scale higher, and really reach out in partnership with, um, with people in the mental health community who can provide those resources and provide that support within the education community. Um, it's a lot of great resources out here, you know, that um, they give, to, you know, that um, different organizations within the mental health field um, give to parents, give to the general public, give to, 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 um, to children. But a lot of times, um, you know, teacher specific 
uh, resources are not available, you know, and they do have trainings, you know, uh, once a year here in Gwinnett County that they offer um, mental health, but we need something more than just you know, once a year, we need something that we can attach to daily that's going to help us to keep going, you know, and keep striving. Because if you have mental health, you know, positive mental health um, with teachers, then, you know, you're going to have positive um, classrooms and positive impacts to your children. You know, if you, if you are dealing with mental health issues, it's very hard to deal with the children within your classroom because you constantly trying to you know get yourself together and so Lamore de Soie is you know just that to serve as a resource to serve as a sharing space to uplift and empower um, teachers in all sectors you know whether you're a nanny whether you're a sitter um, in the public private sector whether you're in early childhood education um, lie to die to everybody, whoever it is that, you know, feels though that they impact children, community leaders, Lamore de Soi, you know, is there to be that resource and be that, um, and be that, uh, that source to help others to achieve mental well-being, mental health. So I'm so excited about this year with Lamore de Soi and you know, and my birthday again is tonight or today, and just celebrating that. So all of this and having people on, um, you know, on on uh, in 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 our Zoom room celebrating my birthday is just phenomenal. So I want to thank you guys for coming out again. And so I'm just gonna show some PowerPoint slides. We do have some panelists who are going to be on this week's um this week's uh events um this week is week one and it is voices of educators so we do have one of our panelists here well two of our panelists here who's going to be um you know giving sharing their experiences and sharing um what they do in early childhood education and so i'm going to show the powerpoint slide um on uh the voice of education and then I'm going to allow them to, um, you know, tell about themselves, those who are on the panel, who we're going to be uh, also featuring uh, interviews for too. So super excited about that. So I'm going to share my screen. If you guys can give me a moment to share my screen with you. So this is the Lamore de Soi framework. And we're gonna share my mission for Lamore de Soi. And the mission for Lamore de Soi is to mutually is a, is a mutually supportive community for educators with emphasis on mental health and wellness through providing resources for self-care, self-love practices, collaboration, serving as stewards over the mind, body, and spirit, and finally, achieving equity through political inclus inclusivity. The challenges that we have as educators is that um, a lot of us are going through burnout, overworking um, educators, also, um, you know, going through with Corona, shortages of supplies, lack of management assistance, student and parental misbehaviors, racial differences. Um, health concerns of pupils and negligence of, of our own, um, you know, just meager salaries, um, food insecurities, uh, workplace disparities, and many, many more um, issues that go along within um, our education community that affect our mental health. And in um, the CDC, it, it, they quote and say that teachers 
are 15% more likely to commit suicide than those of other professions. And that is very, very alarming. Um, educators are frequently left feeling alone and unappreciated and unseen. <clears throat> um, the problem of also with, uh, with a lot of the education community is that uh, we also um, have a stereotype or a stigma about receiving mental health. Um, a lot of times, you know, we think that, you know, it's okay to, you know, make sure that our children are okay, you know, mentally, that our families and our and our children, you know, if you're a mom, making sure you, your children are okay and people all around you are okay. But, you know, us handling our mental, um, our mental health and wellness, a lot of times we can be very neglectful. And so we do have these stigmas that, you know, that we need to, you know, kind of just, you know, be better, you know, push harder. Um, and, and, and those factor in, you know, um, a lot of the mental issues that we a lot of times deal with, with that pushing harder, being stronger, you know, kind of lone wolf and things. And so that, could, that is one of the problems that um, we often face in um, education as well, just that lone wolfing and not reaching out for help and support um, where we really need to. And then also alongside with that is if you are also a minority, you know, especially in the in the African American community, we also have that stigma. So that also pushes that stigma even farther about getting mental health um, and receiving mental health resources as well. So, um, you know, we, that that issue is also in you know in the Black and Brown community. So we really we're doubling that um, that idea of not reaching out for support, not reaching out for help. And so the solution to all that is really creating a framework of Le Mordisoire and bringing it into um, school settings and learning spaces and child cares and um, public private schools um, and other child oriented or child like businesses. Um, so we really need those type of um, sharing spaces in these type of um, entities and organizations and learning spaces that we can come um, and speak, you know, amongst our peers, having peer to peer counseling, having uh, group counseling with someone in the mental health community. Um, just as we do here at Le Mode des Soir online, you know, we have people um, who come in to encourage us to educate and, and empower us on different topics so that we can handle those things because we're much more than uh, graders, we're much more than diaper changers, we're much more than, uh, you know, bus duty um, uh, teachers, but we are actually people with hu we're human beings with feelings and emotions, and we need someone to support us in that area. We need someone to feed our souls. Um, it is an issue that needs to be um, addressed. And so having those um, safe spaces is very, very important. And so we want to have those safe spaces for our, um, for our uh, educators so that they'll be supported and have someone to support them within also the mental health field. And just hearing, you know, your peers and what they're going through is something very important. So um, that's one of the solutions. Also another solution that um, the more they saw um, offers is, you know, having, um, having uh, reliable resources that are teacher specific in the mental health um, in the mental health field, having resources that are specifically for teachers. Again, it's issues that teachers and educators go through that a lot of the general public does not face and have to go through. So we need things that are going to be geared to our community. So that's very important. Um, also, you know, having self 
self-love and self-care um, practices and routines within the framework of the workplace is something that Lamar Deswa can bring to organizations and learning spaces. That is very important to have, um, to have it in the very framework or in um, within your organization and teaching those things because a lot of times, you know, some of us don't practice self-care. I know for me, you know, I'm, I'm diving into it, you know, a little more than I have before, but a lot of, you know, a lot of times, you know, in the past I've lone wolfed it and not really um, being engaging into um, practices of self-care and, um, and self-love. So it's very, very important that we have those things and teach our teachers about um, different ways that we could um, foster self-care and self-love. So those are some things that um, Lemore Destroyer wants to bring to the table. And that is basically what our framework is, is about. So who is Lamore de Soir for? Um, again, these uh, Lamore de Soir's framework is for, um, you know, child cares, um, in-home centers. Um, it can also serve in the um, um, education sectors in private and public. Uh, we can also bring Lamore de Soir into, um, into uh, governmental entities as well. Um, and so, you know, let more this walk and fit into all of those different um, spaces because mental health is very, very important again. And it needs to be specifically for teachers, whatever resources and things that we bring to the table, um, let more this walk is to make sure that it is really geared to, um, teacher specific issues. Also, the framework of Le Mois de Soir um, draws upon three theoretical frameworks, and that's the conflict theory, the strain theory, and social action theory. It provides an effective way to understand and navigate the mental health of educators, which will contribute to long-term positive lifestyles and outcomes. And this is just a diagram of who all the more this swath serves. Again, education um, spaces, colleges, universities, private schools, um, public schools. We need them. We need the more this in child care centers and families, um, and community organizations, um, religious organizations. Lamore de Soir's framework seeks to create an atmosphere of safety and care for educators by providing resources and support to empower mental health and well being. This framework works to respect human rights with an emphasis on establishing effective measures to to improve mental health in the workplace for those in education and education related businesses and organizations. Ultimately, its goal is to provide positive workspaces and lifestyles to promote healthy mental states for all educators. And these are our supporters who are going to, um, who are participating this year. And there's many more we're going to be adding on to other supporters. But again, we have NAMI Georgia. We have Viewpoint Health. Um, we have the Learning Project Network. Uh, we have MPA. We have Nanny on the Go and also Learning Through Playdates. And we have many more to come. So this is Le More de Soir. And I hope this will help people understand what our purpose is here at Kappa Learning Group. Um, we are here to educate, share, and empower and educate educators. Um, we do trainings and we also do consulting um, for um, schools, for private schools, for um, early childhood spaces as well. Um, but we definitely um, are here to support our educators and be that member in the education community to 
pat you guys on the back to celebrate what you do each and every day because it's not easy. And I want to, my hats are off to each and every educator that's watching, that will be watching if it's, you're watching after um, the recording. But thank you so much for what you do each and every day. We know that it is not easy. And thank you for your bravery, you know, through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just sacrificing your life for, um, for, for others, you know? And so it's, it's not an easy thing. So I, my salute, I salute you. My hats are off to you for those you have been in the trenches and really have been, you know, going hard for your, for your students, for your families. Thank you so much for what you do each and every day. All right. And so with that being said, I want to also celebrate our educators who will be a part of this week's Voices of Educators, Voices of Educators. And so we have a couple of panelists here. And I do want to let you guys know that if you are, you know, wanting to be a part of the panel, please let me know. Um, and you can be a part. You can jump in on Friday. It's Friday at uh, 7.30. This Friday at 7.30, we love to have you um, be a part of this panel and, and let the world know who you are. Um, let them, let people know what you're doing. Share your experience uh, with other people who will be a part of that panel. We, the, the, the whole objective of um, the Voices of Educators is to support, um, to be a support to each other and let other people hear your experiences and your voice. So we'd love to have you a part of the Voices of Educators. So thank you so much. So I'm going to, um, first of all, let me acknowledge again, people who come to support me for my birthday today. It's my sis came in. Hey, sis. It's Chrissy, y'all. This is my big sister, Chrissy. How you doing? Good, how are you? Happy birthday. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so um, at this time, we're going to let um, those who are on, on the panel um, to share a little bit about who they are, what we expect, um, and also interviews. I'm doing interviews, too, um, individual interviews. Um, this week of educators and so i want to give them um just a little bit of snippet about who they are to tell everybody who they are what they do um and all that good jazz so um i'm going to give the floor to let me see the first person i see let's see um who is first okay i see connie connie is first so I'm gonna give you the floor, sis. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, happy, happy birthday, Jocelyn. And thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Connie Standifer. I'm actually an author, poet, blogger, and CEO of Push Publishing, which stands for Pray Until Something Happens. I'm really excited and looking forward to being the interview with you on tomorrow, as well as sharing the panel. Um, floor with some of the other remarkable young ladies that you're going to have on Friday. Um, one of the things that I think is very critical to what you're doing it with as far as educators and, and young children, I actually um, just released a children's book. And that particular children's book deals with the loss of loved ones and from the viewpoint of children. And I think that would be an excellent resource because you also mentioned that, you know, coming off of uh, COVID and COVID is not gone, but over the span of three years, we've, ha we've actually had a lot of loss. And, you know, as adults, it's very difficult for us to handle loss, but can you imagine what that's like from the viewpoint of a child? And yes. so I just released a book um, called Mari and the Majestic Butterfly that addresses that issue. So I'm looking forward to talking more about that on tomorrow. And I'm also looking forward to being a part of the panel. And again, happy birthday, girl. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited about 
um, yes. hearing everything that you do. And also, Connie is my Wildcat sister as well. Yes. We see yes. you, the Food Cooking University. Yes, now. hell Wildcat. Hell Wildcat. <laughs> hell Wildcat. <laughs> Lord, we done been all over on, on the news, but that's all yes. right. That's <laughs> all right. We still love them. <laughs> we still love all the water. <laughs> That's all right. We yes. still here, though. We still here. That's so, right. All right. We still here. We still standing. But thank you so much for um, thank you for having me. Thank yes, you for, for having me. A, yes, for just accepting the, the assignment of coming out and sharing. You know what what you're doing. Um, it is very positive and it's powerful. And thank you for being in that space to bring that as well. So we can't wait to hear about everything you're doing on tomorrow i'm super excited thank you <laughs> yes absolutely all right and let's see who else i'm trying to see who else i see um let's see all right we got miss tara brooks she's also going to be here um for the voices of educators and um, Miss Brooks is a good friend of mine. She is also um, one of my consultants. Uh, well, my uh, clients that I, I started off first. She was my very first. Um, and uh, me and Johnita, we go back almost 20, 22 years. She's been a good friend. We met at Cookman too. So okay. um, yes, yes, we met at Cookman. She was uh, in the corral. <laughs> okay <laughs> yes so she's here tonight uh we're going to be interviewing her um on tomorrow as well she has a what they call a micro school and micro schools are very popular now um and so she is um well, the research that i've done um is that she is the um uh, it's only two so it's her and another school um, in Gwinnett County that's considered as a micro school. So we want to have Johnny. Johnny, do you want to uh, give some greetings I, and shout out? I, I, my, my, okay, there we go. That's why y'all can't see me. Okay, there we, there we go. I have some, okay, hold, hold on, let me. Okay, take your okay, there, okay, there, we there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, I'm ex I am excited to be with you all, you all on tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be able to tell you all about our about our micro school, um, and just how we got started and what we're trying to do in the community with the students. We moved from one um, location in Lawrenceville to another location, and right now we're getting our foundation within the church where we are and trying to build a bridge, build a bridge from. Um, the gaps that students have fallen in. So I'm excited to be on the panel and talk to other like-minded individuals and really see how to network and build more bridges to where we can help other students and educators in the community. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And uh, they have a wonderful program there at Majestic Prep. I just love the name Majestic Prep. <laughs> preparatory academy um their their philosophy is um they have creative curriculum active learning and pbl which is project-based learning and the kids absolutely enjoy um especially project-based learning so so much fun a lot of different things that they do um and so we've uh you know like she said we we move from one uh from one location to the next and um, you know she niched down, and we created that micro school. So it's 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 a it's absolutely positively amazing. Um, yeah. The teachers there, uh, Miss Hipsall and Miss Taylor, are absolutely amazing, amazing educators. So um, they will be, you know, they're doing tours. They're going to be um, accepting applications. So if you guys are looking for smaller. Um, school settings, which a lot of parents are, the pods mm -hmm. and the micro schools are being are very popular because more people are looking for smaller ratios, you mm -hmm. know, um, and classroom sizes. So, if you're looking for that type of education, um, and um, 
you know, and you're looking for teachers that are going to meet your children um, at their level, at their need, at, um, you know, at their edu- cognitive level, um, definitely Majestic Prep is where you want to be. So kudos to you guys and all your hard work that you're doing. And uh, so we're going to be listening from Majestic tomorrow. Woo! Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. Love you. <laughs> Love you. All right. Okay. So the next person up um that we have is my assistant. Um, this is my sister. This is my friend. Y'all, let me tell you, divine order was definitely done when we met. I'm telling you, I, I met uh Miss Moyo on Facebook, and this was during the pandemic, guys. I was, um, I'm an in-home child care provider, but as you know, everybody, you know, has some issues, you know, losing families and all of that. So I was one of those persons. I lost all my families during the pandemic. And so um, I was like, oh, I got to do something, you know. Um, so I was like, let me just pivot, you know, pivot and do something that's going to, you know, feed the people right now, you know. Um, in 2018, I, I wrote, um, um, well, did a proposal for um, what was now uh, uh, Learning Through Playdates. Uh, and so Learning Through Playdates was really just an idea. Um, it was a, it's an online preschool. Uh, we, well, I won't say preschool, but education program. It was a preschool at first, but then I scaled it to children from three to six years old. And so it was just an idea. I had it on paper. I was working, uh, going into working for Head Start. I was the um, the lead or the head um, instructor for Rockdale and DeKalb County. And so um, I was teaching the CDA. And so I was creating a... Um, uh, a field experience for the teachers. And I said, I implement, you know, learn to play day. And so, um, you know, as you know, head starts, you know, uh, get new grantees, things happen. And so I wasn't able to launch it. Um, but then the pandemic hit and I was like, I got learning through play day. So let's try it out. You know, I'm one of them ones. I just jump out in there. <laughs> and just, do it. It may not work. That's all right. I'll try something else, you know. So I'm that time very creative. And so um I started and I was like, Lord, when do I need to go and take this? You know, learn it through play day. Where where do I go with this? And so I just meditated and prayed and I got my answers started in South Africa. I was like, wow, South Africa. I don't know nobody in South Africa. <laughs> So I started doing my research and talking to people in different groups and things. And I had this, these group of ladies I was asking questions to. And um, and they soon, you know, I was talking to them. And then you know how people just kind of fade out, you know. But this one lady just kept sticking around and I just kept talking to her. And that was my sister, Ms. Moyo. And we built a relationship ever since. So we started off just, you know, talking and texting on, you know, uh, on Facebook. And now we on Zoom, we WhatsApp, we do whatever it takes for us to communicate. And she's been, her family has embraced me like my, like I'm a part of their family. You know, she's like a sister to me. So when I go to South Africa, I ain't got to worry about where I got to sleep and eat. I got family them so it's just a blessing to you know to um be able to connect to somebody all the way to South Africa and and then also understanding the culture was is just beautiful you know um our you know our seasons are polar opposite right now um it's you know it's cold over here but it's warm over there and that and their temperature is very similar to Atlanta a lot of the places um, the stoop places in South Africa look like Atlanta. Um, a lot of people who are in Atlanta are moving to South Africa. They have a group right now. It's growing. It's like 600 people in our WhatsApp group um, and on Facebook. 
that are in Atlanta and moving to South Africa. So there is a connection, a divine connection between, you know, my vision and then also delivering that vision to South Africa. So it's just really something else to, um, to be in connection with. So um, I'm going to let Ms. Moyo introduce herself. She, she's, she's a lady of few words, but she's a powerful lady. She goes out in the community and represents um, learning through play day in a powerful, powerful way. We've uh, educated, shared, and empowered um, uh, children in South Africa in uh, golfing. We've educated, shared, and empowered children in Zimbabwe. And so we are, you know, making our global rounds. So it's been a powerful, powerful uh, three years that we've been working. And, you know, of course, we also uh, educated children here in the, in the States as well. I even implemented the Learning Through Play Date um, curriculum in some of um, uh, Majestic Prep as well, because we do um, have after school children that um, were in a uh, uh, learning through play day. So it's just a powerful, powerful um, connection. It's a powerful initiative. And so I'm going to let Miss Moyo have some words. It's, it's late over there where it's early morning over there. They are seven hours um, ahead of us when they like saving time. And then um, when they like saving time is over, then they back at six hours. So Miss Moyo, I'm going to give you the floor. Hello, everyone. How are you? I'm ah. sorry. I, I'm sorry we're on the chain. We don't have power at the meantime. So okay. we're on the darkness. Hi, yeah. how are you, everyone? Thank you so much. Your birthday, just Jocelyn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so um, in South Africa, they have something called load shedding. And so they are off the grid for about five or six hours. So sometimes they don't have power um, uh, to so because their um, elect electricity um, systems are not very good. So she's going through load shedding right now, but she got some power on her phone. So she just wanted to come in and say hello and wish me a happy birthday. So thank you, Ms. Moyo, so much. Um, and please check out Learning Through Play Day um, on Facebook um, and look at the pictures of what the kids are doing. We're going to be having a Black History program coming up um, the third week of this month. So um, check us out. We did one last year. It was so cute. Kids dressed up as uh, different Black History people and so forth. So it was really, really nice. And um, so please check out Learning Through Play Day. Um, again, we have classes on Mondays and Wednesdays. We're going to this year try to extend it to the weekend so those who are in, um, you know, in their respective learning spaces can join us on the weekend. So Learning Through Play Day is, again, one of our programs that we, uh, we do online. Um, and then we also have um, community play dates that we're going to be implementing. And we're hoping to have the nanny community to be a part of our community play date um, classes as well. So thank you so much, Ms. Moyo. And so I got to acknowledge this lady who just walked, uh, just came in. This is Ms. Taylor. She is one of our teachers at Majestic. Ms. Taylor, how you doing? <laughs> you on mute. Uh oh, we can't hear you. You got to turn that volume up. Okay, man, she'll, she'll get it, get it in the momentarily. Can you, can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. The sound is not working. 
but I'm going to just speak on her behalf. But Miss Taylor is, a, she is an awesome, awesome teacher. She's been teaching for over 30 something years. Um, again, I met her while at Majestic and we just mesh, we just clicked. And so um, we've been working together um, with the programming and everything like that. And she has an amazing classroom. Um, she has really uh, just taken off with the training that we that we've done together and all of the awesome projects that they did, the PBLs and just everything. It's just been amazing in her classroom. She is the um, uh, second to fifth grade teacher there at Majestic Prep. And she has um, some little boys in her class and they absolutely adore her. I'm talking about they have a lot of fun in there and she's just an awesome teacher. So I just want to thank Ms. Taylor for just being so open to um, the training that uh, that was implemented uh, while I was at Majestic Prep and just working with her and just her openness. She's just a jewel to have um, on staff. So Thank you so much, Ms. Taylor, for everything that you do each and every day. Um, you are a jewel for uh, Majestic Prep. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then also, too, I want to acknowledge, I want to acknowledge my sister, Miss Riggins, Latoya Riggins. That is my sister. That is my friend. I'm telling you, she is a force to be reckoned with, y'all in these uh, ECE streets. So I got to let her say something. And she has also participated in so many things that uh, Capital Learning Group has created. She was with our mommy and mocktail. She was one of our recipient uh, of, um, she got an award for being uh, just boss. Uh, <laughs> she is out in these ECE streets doing it up, y'all. So I want to acknowledge her and uh, just let her get some words out. Um, and please, I hope that you'll be a part of our panel as well. I've been sending out emails and things. I'm not good at administration. So I'm going to get my admin, Miss Love, this week to help me because I'm going to tell you, it's been a lot. But I hope that you have received that email. But I would love for you to be on our panel Friday. If you can't, that's okay. We got the rest of the month, and I got to get you in in one of these days for this month. But I want to just uh, give you the floor just to give us uh, words of welcome. Tell us about a little bit about what you do as well. Hi, Jocelyn. Thank you, and happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> I was like... I hope I didn't miss the party. Sorry, everybody. I was a little late. I just got home. But I am Latoya Riggins, and I love early childhood education. As you can see, Craft by Better Futures is my brand. We do online business and professional development courses for ECE owners. We focus on the business portion. So we really support a lot of different businesses all over the place. Um, I definitely love working with Jocelyn. When I found out about her work with South Africa, it was really near and dear to my heart because um, one of my business partners is in Namibia, right above South Africa. And I was able to take my children last year to help her launch the Innovation Center. And we do a lot of collaborative work um, when it comes to ECE operations and actually providing opportunities for people to work remotely in Africa. Just like she said, they're seven hours ahead. So we have people working to the wee hours, you know, cause it's late there, but it's still early here. We're just providing opportunities um, both ways. So I'm excited to be here. I would love to be on the panel. Friday, I'm, big, I'm booked, but you said there's other weekends. Let me know. Um, yes. We have uh, a membership that we, um, we have three different memberships. We cater to family child care, all child care, but we have a brand for family child care. We have a brand for uh, storefront providers, like storefront child care. And then we have like our luxury brand, which is for providers, any provider that is really looking to do a, a huge overhaul in their business. So that's what we do. We support the business portion because as you know, as educators, they do not teach you business in school. You know, they teach you all about education, but you know, Oh, and so many of you guys are entrepreneurs. So we're here to support the entrepreneur in you with, from an ECE standpoint. So I love it. We, we're growing strong. Check us out. We're at Craft by Better Futures on Instagram. Ah, so I can't wait to see more. Thank you for having me.
You are welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for always just saying yes to the assignment. And I just, I just appreciate you. And and you, you we just all, we just hit it off. Like we've been knowing right, each other. Right? Like from the been, gate. Like, yes, from the gate, you know. And it's just good to have people like that, you know, to that you can just click with, you know, and just feel at home. It's nothing like that feeling, you know, to yeah. have people in support of you and 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 just to do that. And I just want to thank you. And I'm like, Lord, I wish you had something on the weekend because it's so hard for me to get out and 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 get into some of your seminar because it's during the time that I'm teaching or doing something. Girl, please have something on the weekend so I can attend something. Cause girl, I'm telling you, I, the ones that I have that I have attended was so powerful. You know, it was so powerful, and and um, and the work that you do is is powerful. And we need to be more educated in business, even with me. I ain't ashamed to say that I that I need you know need some more education in that as well. You know, and um. You know, we just as educators, we gotta keep evolving and learning and and getting obtaining information. We can't stop. We have to keep going. We can't never say we've been in the industry this long and we can't learn no more. That's a lie from the pits. You can always learn something, you know. Yeah. It ain't always got to be in a book, it ain't always got to be from word of mouth, but we can always learn something formal or informal. So I appreciate what you're doing out here and mm -hmm. um empowering the early childhood providers and, ed, um, and educators and, and teachers and business owners, because we need, we need that business aspect, you know. Um, so thank you so much for what you sacrifice and what you do each and every day. If y'all, if y'all can go back um, to some of our things in Capital Learning Group and listen to Toya's story, you know, being a single mom, doing, just doing the thing powerful stuff y'all so um thank you so much again just for coming out of your busy schedule to support um capital learning group we appreciate everything that you do my pleasure i love it i love what you're doing jocelyn i love that you incorporate you and i just love that you are pushing the industry forward because it takes all of us and i think that the more that we collaborate the better it will be because we're all kind of operating in silos these little pockets all yeah. over the place so the more we get the word out and bring more people together and really make them respect mm. this industry like it's yeah. supposed to be. Okay, because yeah. this is the essential to the essential. Okay? Exactly. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We got to do it. We got to. We got to let people know, you know, early childhood is, is the start. It's the bud, you know. And I was just talking about how we have this hierarchy of education. You know, we look down at the nannies. We look down at early childhood providers. We lift up people in public school. You look down at people in the, this, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a chance. It's a hierarchy. And then we got the, we got the, we got to stop doing that. You know, we all in this thing together, you know, as one. And so, you know, that's what the more they swat is about to bring all of those, everybody in every sector matter. We all have an emphasis. We all have an influence. We all can impact children and students, no matter where we at in this in this in this community. You know, um, especially the nannies. I'm so in love with the nannies now. I'm just a fan of them because y'all do not know what they go through. You know, they are in, they are there in actually in the lives of families. I mean, in their houses, in, they know what's going on inside of the family structure you know they are definitely an extension of that family. they are like another aunt another you know grandma sister whatever you know uh when you're in early childhood or you're in public school you do what you do in your workplace and you go into the house but a lot of nannies are at the house they are in people's you know lives and you know and also too understanding the history of nannies, you know, it really started in African American culture as well here in the States, you know, uh, with, with nanny. And so it's, it's a powerful, powerful space to be a nanny. So my, my respects is all, you know, to the nannies. I'm definitely a fan of them. Um, we're going to have nanny on the go, Kimberly, nanny on the go. If y'all haven't, um, heard about Kim, y'all go on Instagram, hit Kim up. 
Nanny Kim, Nanny on the go. She is powerful. Um, hey, Gail, Crystal Gail is another nanny. She um, started Elite Atlanta Elite Metro um, Nanny Agency here in Atlanta. She is, man, she is hot, y'all. I'm talking about she in these nanny streets. She is going to political realms. Um, to help domestic workers, you know, get fight for rights. So, you know, she's doing some powerful things. So, you know, they, I'm connected to, to some powerful women um, in this industry. And it's just a blessing to be a part of that. So again, um, so I want to thank you again for coming out and just for everybody for coming out, giving me birthday wishes and, you know, just just this, it's just been a blessing today. So I just want to thank you. And then last but not least, my best friend, my bestest, bestest friend is on here too. Uh, Sheridan Williams. Sheridan, you're on mute. He's also going to be, <laughs> he also going to be helping me with Le More de Soir. Um, The very last week of this month is education um, and community leadership. And so we're going to also throughout the month, we're going to do what we call the Blue Heart Award. Um, my good friend, my sister, she she's like the Martha Stewart of ECE, I call her. But Rashawn Webb, she is powerful and uh, a powerful lady in, in Texas. She's doing her thing with ECE. Um, she's internationally known, nationally known. Um, she was a recipient of the Blue Heart Award last year. And so this year we are also gifting um, some other teachers. If you guys have any teachers or people in mind that you think will be a great recipient, please let me know. We have an application that you guys can fill out and we will acknowledge them um, during uh, the month of February. Also, if we have any fallen teachers, um, um, any of our teachers that have passed away that you know of, please submit their names and we will also um, do a moment of silence for them as well. Um, so please, if you know anyone who's passed that's dear to you, please let me know. We will also lift their name up as well. But my friend Sheridan, he will be helping me with Le More de Soir. He fussing at his niece right now. <laughs> He'll be helping with Le More de Soir on the fourth week of this month and so this it is a very powerful session that we're going to have um it is called kusoma kusoma um is swahili for read and so we are going to have a panel of black men who are in education and community leadership to come out and to give their um experience as a as a black male educator um, and community leader, give their experiences, um, share their experiences, support um, their efforts. It's a very powerful space, y'all. We had it the very first um, Le More de Soir. And when I tell you that space was powerful, it was powerful, guys. And I started that panel, Kusoma. Um, actually, it was a program that I started in my in-home childcare. And so I had children, the demographic of children that I had were children of color. And a lot of the children um, did not have uh, male influences or their fathers in their lives. So I wanted to do something um, that would help, um, you know, bring and bridge that together and also um, merge that with um, uh, early literacy. So they will come and volunteer their time and read to the kids, do games and, and things of that such. And it was a very, very powerful. So I wanted to bring that aspect of, um, you know, just really um, admiring Black men um, in their respective places in education and, and the community and uplift them and share their experience, you know, have that space to share their experience. They need more sharing spaces. And so we allow that time um, the fourth week of February for them to come out and, um, you know, as, as, as one and talk about their experiences, uplift, you know, that uplift them and celebrate them. So it's a very powerful space. So, um, and we're still, you know, if anyone wants to be on a panel, please feel free to let me know. Um, we do have some guests that will be a part of Le More des Soir. Um, and so just keep looking out and we're gonna be having the flyers out for that.
And also go on Capital Learning Group or um, on Facebook or at Educate, Share, and Empower, well, Educate, Share, Empower. And um, on the Capital Learning Group's page, you will see um, the custom of the very first panel. Um, and I encourage you to um, look at that and, and gain some knowledge and, and um, really um, get some of that uh, get some of that knowledge from what those men share with the masses. And also too, um, please, if you can register, tell your colleagues um, about Le More de Soir. Um, we do have a website, it's www.lemoresdesoirproject.com. Um, and so you guys can register. I put the link um, in our uh, chat. You can, the link is all over on uh, Capital Learning Group's page. You can register for free. Um, tell your colleagues about it. We're going to have mental health workshops in the second week of February, free mental health workshops from Nomni and Viewpoint Health. So please register so that you will be a part of that. Please tell everybody, lot of daddy, everybody, all your colleagues about it. It is free. So y'all, please come out and support um, these efforts. So that's all I have to say about that. Um, <laughs> Chad is so silly. So yeah, but I'm super excited about everything that's happening this month. I think it's going to be a powerful space, and I cannot wait to share all of the panelists, all of the interviews for this month. It's going to be something powerful. So, um, again, thank you guys so much for coming out. All those who came out um, to su support the Morde Swa the panelists, interviewers, people who've been in our past uh, events. Thank you so much for coming out. All the birthday wishes on today on my page. I thank you so much on my um, business page. Thank you. It's just a blessing to see 42. So many folks are gone on y'all. And it's just a blessing to be a blessing to others and for people to just say happy birthday and, and give you they flower, give you flowers while you're living. So I'm just, I'm just blessed today to have so many people to just say happy birthday. Take, they, take the time out to say that because you didn't have to, but you did. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I ain't going to hold y'all. I'm going to let you go. Y'all enjoy the rest of your week and remember to educate, share, and empower. So we signing off. Bye, y'all. Bye. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy birthday. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.